I just want you to like take a step back and think, honestly think, and don't be egotistical about this, actually audit yourself. Think to yourself, are you studying enough? And are you studying hard enough, right? Or are you just spending time and not getting any effective study done at all, right? Because this is one of the biggest problems that I had in year 12 and I had in uni as well, is knowing whether the amount that I'm studying, is that enough for me to achieve the goals that I want to achieve, right? If I want to get like a 97, 98 ATAR, if I want to get into engineering or like a STEM degree that requires a higher ATAR, is the amount which I'm studying right now, is that enough? That was one of the biggest problems which I had because it's such a big complex problem because everything's a ranking system. So if it's a ranking system, then the amount that you study has to be compared to the amount that everyone else studies and you have to try and sort of climb to the top and be in the top echelon of students somehow. But does your studying time reflect that or does it not reflect that? Or how do we study minimally and get the maximum amount of effort or maximum amount of results rather, right? That was my biggest problem. And I sort of came to a conclusion. I sort of solved this problem for myself. And the way that I think about this is I think about it like if someone held a gun to your head, right? If someone was holding a gun to my head and said, you only had half an hour, or you only had one hour to study for a specific subject. Let's just take methods, for example, math, math methods, three, four, right? If someone held a gun to my head and said, you have one hour to study methods every single day and you could only do one thing, what would that be? If you ask me that, then, and if I ask you that, I guess the answer would be very simple. Like we know instinctively, intuitively, the things that we have to do to get the maximum amount of results, right? If we were, time, if we were constrained by time specifically, if someone said you only had an hour and you have to do one thing, pick one thing now and do it until the end of the year, what would you do? And I realized if someone asked me that question, what I would say is I would do questions. I wouldn't care about the content because the content you can sort of learn and as, as you're doing the questions, right? As you're doing the questions and get things wrong, you can sort of figure out how to do it. And as you're going to school, you sort of learn the content as well. So in my head, I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna do questions now. So if I have an hour to study, let's find the most effective singular thing that's gonna give me the most amount of results and let's dial in on that, let's focus on that, let's double down on that, that's how I thought, okay? So then what I started to do is I started to just do uh, a whole heap of questions because that's the most effective way, right? And you can sort of expand this if it's a more complicated subject, you can think about it in terms of, a, the main goal of this is to be minimalistic, okay? Don't try to do so many things at once. What are the one or two things that you could do to really boost yourself and get to the end goal? If you know for a fact that you can only spend one hour and get a 40 plus or a 45 plus in methods, I know that what I would do is I would spend 20 minutes going over the things which I learned in school and then 40 minutes doing questions. Doesn't that make sense? Because that, that's how I think, right? I come home, I do 20 minutes of, of the recap of what we learned at school, and then for 40 minutes, I just do questions, right? I just sit down, no distractions, I just continue doing questions, doing questions, doing questions, and then for the last 10 minutes, I'd maybe um, go over all the answers and see what I got wrong. And if you do it this way, it's very simple. You can eliminate sort of all the bullshit that comes with studying and knowing, or oh, do I study, do I spend two hours studying the content, understanding the, the concepts, or do I do questions? you know that if you do questions, that's the most bang for your buck activity. So that's what you should do, right? So doing that, I translated this and I sort of projected this to all my other subjects. And then for methods, for physics, for chemistry, right? For all these subjects, I just said, okay, I'm gonna come home. I'm gonna look at what the teacher went through in class today. I'm gonna go over the theory. I'm just gonna do questions. And at the start, I was really bad at questions. And actually for most of the year, I was actually really bad at, doing these questions at the start because it's brand new theory that you're learning at school, okay? So you're learning this brand new theory, you're coming home and you're doing questions and you're not competent at this topic at all. So you're not gonna do well in any of the questions. But what ends up happening is all that hard work that you do and all that um, uncomfortability that you feel, right? You feel really uncomfortable when you're doing questions on things that you don't know. There'd be times where I'd be stuck on a question for so long and I would feel like once I got to the end of that hour, I feel like I knew nothing because I'd just be stuck on one or two questions, right? But the thing is over time that reduces and you go through phases where you might just do like one or two questions for the hour. And then you go through phases where you're just banging out questions over and over again and you get so much done. And then you go through another phase where you're only struggling to do one or two questions. And then 
It's all about consistency and doing this over and over again, right? Adrian talked about this in one of his uh, recent TikToks that he he made for our channel, Mind Learning. If you haven't if you haven't followed us, Mind Learning on TikTok, he was talking about the curve of forgetting, and he was talking about as you expose yourself to the concept four or five times, that's when you actually remember things, right? It's it's been scientifically proven. Like this is not I'm not coming up with this. This has been scientifically proven that on average. When you expose yourself to the content once, you only remember like 60% of the content, right? And then as you expose yourself to the content over and over again, your retention increases, right? What you remember 60% of will increase to 70%, then 80%, then 90%. So what he was talking about was, okay, if that's the case, then what I'll do is I'll expose myself to this concept multiple times. I'll do maybe 20 minutes of study before I go to school on the day, right? If we have to break that one hour block, you can do a morning block and an afternoon block. You'd wake up in the morning and you do 20 minutes of content before you go to school or even before your class. You can literally take 20 minutes or 10 minutes going through the things that we're gonna go through in class and just be conscious about what we're gonna gonna go through in class. You'd be surprised that just by spending 10 or 20 minutes to prepare, right? How much differently you learn in class. Right, it's a 10 or 20 minute investment, which will actually pay off and give you back three or four hours later of study. Right, let me say that again. Okay, if you do 10 or 20 minutes of study beforehand, if you prepare that much beforehand, you will literally save hours of study after school just because during the class now, you know exactly what questions to ask and you ask them from the teacher and you know the answers at the end of the class. Right? So once before you go to class, the second time during class, the third time you do questions after class when you go home. When you expose yourself to the concept like three times, that retention rate goes from like 60% to 90%, right? And as you've exposed yourself to the concept over and over again, how much study have you done? You've still only done like half an hour of study because you've done it 10 or 20 minutes or 15 minutes before class. You did it during class. And then after school, you just do 30 or 40 questions right? Just quick rapid fire questions over and over again to really consolidate this, your understanding of that concept. What ends up happening is two things. The first thing is you've exposed yourself to the concept multiple times, which scientifically we know increases the amount that you're going to remember it. So now as you go to your sack, you actually remember the content more. The second thing that happens is um, what I said before, you're using your time very effectively and you're getting time back to put into other subjects. You're not wasting three or four hours after school trying to go over the content that you went during school, right? You're not trying to learn this content or the concepts brand new. You're just trying to do questions and you might suck at the questions, but what ends up happening is over time, you get better and better. And over time, you look back and you think, I actually have done so many questions, right? And I've done the most bang for my buck activity, but I haven't actually spent much time. And that's the most important thing is we're all busy and we all want to have lives and we all don't want to be stuck um, to our books and glued to our books the whole day. But we have to understand the way that we can make that work, right? There's people, there's a reason why there's people that only study a little bit and get really good results. And there's a reason why people have to study 10 hours a day and they get similar to results uh, to people that only study half an hour a day, right? I got some friends that studied pretty much half of the amount that I studied, but got the exact same score as what I did. Why is that? Why is it so different? If you look online or you talk to different people, they're all going to give you different ideas or they're going to say, you only need to study two hours. You only need to study half an hour. You have to to study six hours. Everyone's going to have differing opinions. But the reason for this is because the time that you study and the sequence that you put that study chunks in between actually matters, right? If I said one hour of study and I said half an hour before school, half an hour after school, right? The 20 minutes or half an hour before school is going through the theory to make sure that you understand it during class. You do a bit during class. So you do some questions during class. After school, you go through the questions. You've only studied for one hour, but you've got the maximal amount of knowledge that you could possibly get from that one hour. If you put the one hour now at the end of school, right? You finish your class. You didn't really pay attention in class. Now you go home. What do you think is going to happen for the hour? You're probably just going to be going through your book and trying to understand what you learned at school, right? Two different things. So to get the same amount of uh, results that I would have gotten by doing half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the afternoon after school, 
by paying attention during school, you might have had to study for three hours just to get the same amount of result, right? That's the difference. If you're smart about the way you spend time and how you block your study time, then you can get the results with the minimal amount of effort. And that's why there's so much differing opinion about how much you need to study, right? But let me tell you, it's about being smart with how you study. This is what people say when they say, be smart about how you study and um, where, how you spend your time. Smarty, stu not smarty, study smart, not hard. That's what they mean. But the thing is, a lot of people don't understand. They just say, oh, you study smart, not hard, but they don't really understand what that means. This is what it means. Is you making sure you pay attention, making sure that you can split your study up into um, chunks where you're exposing yourself to the content over and over again, right? If you can do that, and you can do that consistently throughout the whole year, and you can sort of find a program which works for you and works for the way that you think, then by the end of the year, you will have gotten so far, much further than everyone else, and it wouldn't have felt like it. And you would have been able to have a life. You would have been able to do part-time job. You would have been able to make money and take care of your, your siblings, whatever commitments you have. Um, you would have been able to go out with your mates from time to time. You don't have to skip out on parties. All these things, right? Study smart, right? Not hard. But there's a way to do it. At the end of the day, the one thing that you need to realize is that if you actually try, you will achieve everything you wanted, right? I, I think a lot of people don't understand this is, and a lot of people think that it's genetic or you're gifted or you're academically talented or whatever. That's not the case. If you actually try, well, that might be the case. People might have advantages over other people, but that's just with everything in life, right? So why complain about that? What you should do is you should literally do the work and you will get the results. It's, it's that simple. You'll be surprised if you haven't been doing the work or you haven't been consistent. Just being consistent, you will get the results. And it's that simple. And it feels stupid for me to say this, but a lot of people don't understand this, um, is get the basics right. Stop spending your time scrolling, consuming, right? Start spending your time if you are gonna consume and you can't really stop and you're always on your phone, would well, start spending time on consuming educational content. Stop doing all this useless stuff that doesn't matter. Start consuming educational content, right? That's gonna start like an upward spiral of success and study a bit more. And you will be surprised with consistency, how your personality changes and how you actually get results. And I think that's a very, I think that's a very underrated thing. And right? it's a very overlooked thing rather that no, no one really talks about and everyone's trying to look for this new trick and these study habits and making flashcards and whatever is if you can't get the basics right, then why would you try this, all this like fancy stuff? It's like, if, if, there was a, if there was a smoker, right, and he was smoking a pack of cigarettes a day, and then he realized that tap water is bad for you because it has all these chemicals, and what I'm going to do is now I'm going to buy a reverse osmosis filter and put it under my sink so that the water comes out perfectly, and then I'll remineralize the water, whatever, with salt so that it's perfect for my health. Well, if you can't even get the basics right, if you're not even sleeping properly and you're, not, and you're smoking every single day, then why would you care about doing this drinking water properly? right? It, it doesn't make any sense. So th the most, you, you know, you know what to do. If you have bad habits, get rid of those bad habits first and study a bit more. And if you can get the basics right, then you will become successful and you will achieve the score that you want to achieve, right? Adrian said this in another video and this um, was really not eye-opening, but it was like, oh, this is, yeah, it's, it's common sense. He said, if someone held a gun to your head and said, you have to get a 99.8 or 90, 97, 98 ATAR this year, you have to get it, or someone you love dies, or your dog dies, or something like that. If someone said that, or they say that you die, then 95% of the time, 97% of the time, you're gonna achieve that result because the stake is high. So the difference between people that actually do well and the difference between people that don't do well is literally their mindset. It's because the people that do well see a higher stake in failing than the people that don't do well, right? If you take me, for example, I had, to, like for me, engineering, there was no other option for me other than engineering. It didn't make sense. I didn't even apply for anything um, below engineering. Like all my uni preferences were engineering in different unis, right? So if I got like a, like an 88, I would, wouldn't even know where to go. I probably wouldn't have even gone to uni because I didn't even have that option in my, in my preferences. So for me, that wasn't even an option, getting below 
ascend ATAR to the point where I couldn't get into engineering, right? I saw such a high stake in failing that it didn't, it didn't cross my mind that I could even get a lower result. So as a result, I naturally just started uh, studying smarter and harder and longer, right? And so that's the difference between someone that actually really wants it and someone that doesn't want it. So you need to sort of change your mind into untraining yourself from all the bad habits and just doing the good habits because you instinctively know you don't need any of anyone's advice. You don't need my advice. You don't need your parents' advice. You don't need your teacher's advice. You know instinctively what you need to do if you wanna get a good score. You're just not doing it sometimes. And that's the problem. So action step, get off this video and go and study. Really simple.